Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Tips and Tricks Tuesday and today we are coloring glasses. So we are going to color the wine glasses, well the champagne glasses, and I've put in the um, lines for the fireplace behind the glass as well as the lines for the, the um, garland behind this glass. So we will be coloring those in so that uh, you can see them behind the glass. So that's about where we're going to start. Um, glass is a very simple thing to color. Uh, there's several different types of glass like for example this bottle here is a green glass so it's not very see-through. So you're not having to um, make sure that you can see the outline of other things in the glass. Where you have a clear glass and you need to make sure that you have the ability to see, even if it's fuzzy, what's behind the glass. So we're not going to color this in perfectly. We're actually going to color this in quite a bit lighter than the rest of the fireplace. So that's what we're going to do first. So I'm going to grab some colors here for the fireplace mantle. So we need number 102, which is khaki. And this is going to be our base color. Now I'm not going to color too much of the fireplace. I am going to color the bricks and the mantle on this side. Now I'm going to use a, I'm going to switch you over to the close-up camera here so you can see what I'm doing first of all. I'm going to use a bit of a heavier hand here where that um, mantle is exposed and then when I get down into here where the mantle is behind the glass I'm going to use a lighter hand. I'm just putting that color in there so that it can be seen. So I'm not going to color the whole mantle or all of the stones. I'm going to color what is behind the glass so that we can color the glass. Alright, so there's number 102. Now I need number 105. Which should be this one which is camel and we're going to follow this line and darken that up and follow this line and darken that up and then follow the line of the bottom and edges of the mantle here and we're going to darken the top up a lot more like that. Now we're going to get into the stonework here and we're going to start with number eight. I think that's this one which is just straight gray and I'm going to sharpen this because I want a good sharp edge to do that stonework to outline that stonework. I don't want it to be really dark but I still want it to be visible. So I'm just putting in that shadow from the mantle and bringing that stonework down. Putting in the shadow from the next stone. Make sure that you don't draw over your ribbon. And we've got a curved stone here. Once again, just making sure that I get the edges of the stones in there. I don't want it to be really dark, 
but I don't want it to be so light that you can't see it. Now in this area down here, this is going to be a lot denser in the glass, so I'm going to do that very, very lightly. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see a little bit better of what I'm doing. Uh, and that way you can see what I mean when I'm doing things. There we go. That's better. There we go. Oh. I don't know why it reverted. Sorry guys. Every once in a while it just decides I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Alright, so let's go back into that and we'll zoom it all the way in. There we go. Alright. So as you can see, I've darkened that line up a little bit, making sure that I'm getting it in there, but I'm not as I get further down into the thicker areas of glass, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. And just enough pressure that you can see that there's there's a stone, bit of stonework back there. Now we're going to take um, I want a little bit of a brown gray. Um, Oh, that's too dark. So I need, I need, I need, I need this one. Yeah. So this is a dark olive green. And I'm just putting it in for the little bit of brown that it's going to give. Like I said, I'm just doing the stonework that's in the glass. And of course this area here is going to have another color over top of it for the champagne. So you will see the lines and that sort of thing, but you're not going to be too worried about all of the different colors that are going to be there. So now we're going to go in with this um, light gray. I'm going to sharpen it up. And we're just going to very, very gently fill in that light gray. And down here it's not a whole lot of necessity to put in too much color just a little bit so that it looks like there's something behind the glass. Alright, now we're going to take our lightest blue which is powder blue. Now you can do this with grays or you can do it with blues or you can do it with yellows because the actually because the champagne is in the glass I'm going to start off with the lightest yellow which should be wheat sharpen it up a little bit and we're going to start here in the champagne And I'm just putting in that champagne color. I know I have a champagne yellow and I will be using it in conjunction with this yellow color. like that. Now I'm only doing the very top here because this bow goes all the way around 
and this band behind it is a part of the bow. So I'm going to actually color back there a little bit of the bow color. And that's why I haven't gone too dark back there. I think it's bow. It might be champagne. Hmm. It looks like it's bow though. It's bow in my brain so that's what I'm going to do it as. So now I want the bow to be red. So I'm going to take the deepest red that I have which is number 110 uh, which is cardinal red and I'm just going to very lightly color in a little bit underneath there so that you can see the bow behind the champagne like that. So that's looking at it from the inside of the glass. Now we're going to take champagne yellow. That's mimosa. I know I have it. There it is. So this is champagne yellow. And we're going to do the outside edges of the glass and the areas that the champagne is going to be the brightest like up here at the top and over here where no, that should be green there oh well I missed a shadow I missed a spot and there will be a little bit of green there for that garland behind it if I do it green I might do it in fall colors since this is supposed to be Thanksgiving, not Christmas. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm using a heavier hand right over top of that gray. So you can still see the gray, but the champagne yellow is more prominent. like so. Now if you want to make it a little bit thinner you can either go over it again with your wheat yellow or you can just take your eraser into the center area where it's going to be lightest and just lighten it up just a touch like that. You know and basically what I just did is I, I uh, blurred the lines of the fireplace behind the glass so it doesn't look so stark especially with the, the fluid inside the glass. It's not going to look as as clear as up here where there is no fluid behind the glass. Now in order to color the glass area we're going to take our... Hello everyone. Okay so I'm messed up a little bit and <laughs> muted my mic by accident. So we're going to go through and I'm going to explain what I'm doing. So currently I am going through with a powder blue and um, adding the powder blue to the edge of the glass creating that effect of um, glass. So it, it basically it makes it look like there's something there uh, even though the glass is clear. So it just gives you a bit of a shadow for your curved areas and this is all done with just a bit of powder blue and of course we're just making sure that it's going into all of the shadow lines and around the edges a little bit deeper than it would in the center of course. 
because the the glass has different tiers it's got to have a little bit more of a deeper blue around the edges and underneath those tiers. So now we're up into where the champagne is and again we're using that blue to create that edge of the glass. come down into the curve of the glass make sure that you get a good layer there so that you can get that look into the glass now where that garland is going behind the glass we're going to add a little bit of blue there just so it looks a little green same with up at the top adding that blue to give that curvature of the glass visibility Up at the top, also going through with that blue. And you can definitely go over an area that you've already colored, uh, like the mantle area here, just so that it gives it that tone that you're, you're, you get when you look through the glass. Just feathering it out a little bit into the center, towards the center of the glass so that it gives it that curved effect. All right. All right, now we're going to do the garland. Uh, and no, now we're going to uh, blend everything together with the white. Sorry. And basically, what that does is it. Um, just helps feather out that blue a little bit and makes the glass look see-through. It also blends in and fades out um, the lines from the mantle and the fireplace. So using the white will give you that um, blurred effect that you want uh, when it comes to things like the brickwork and stuff behind the glass so you get that dimension. So once we get this all blended in and everything else then we can start on the bow. Now as you know I did the back area of the bow with a little bit of red so that's already finished and once we finish the bow it will look Proper, I promise. It doesn't look like the top of the wine is red. All right, so now that's all blended together. I'm just going to blend that small area above the bow and do any touch ups that may need to be done. And then we're going to start on the after getting all the white dust off. We'll start on the bow which we're going to start with uh, cardinal red I do believe. Yes. We're going to start with some cardinal red and we're going to do it very heavy for the back part of the bow. Just not even worried about the pressure because this is all behind the bow so it's all going to get that shadow from the bow. And then we're going to put the cardinal red in the deepest areas in the shadow areas of the bow. So anywhere that you see that the bow is overlapping or creating a shadow, um, you'll put the, the deeper red color. Alright. Of course down the edges of the bow I can't remember what that part is called. <laughs> I know there's a name for it. I can't remember what it is called though. Okay, and now we're going to go in with rose. Here, uh, rose red, yeah, which is number 70. I just have to 
to find it. All right. I'm taking longer to find it than I thought I was. There we go. So we're going to go through with the rose red very lightly, just filling that all in. I'm not worried about doing it too dark at this point um, because I want to put in some more shadow and more definition, more curvature to the bow. Which I'm going to do with a darker red. So just getting both sides of that bow coated with the rose red. Then we're going to go in with a darker red for the rest of the shadowy areas. I do believe we're going to use strong red, which is number 74. And we're just going to go around the bow and find our deepest areas and build those out a little bit so that it gives the curvature of the bow. So, all right, just getting into the back part of the bow, making sure that that shadow is nice and dark. Once that's all done, we'll go back over it with the rose red and just filling in all that white spot. And deepening up that color just a little bit. Now one of the ways that you can make sure that you, you know, fill in as much of the white spot as you can is of course by coloring in the opposite direction. Then you lay down the first layer and that way it covers up all the white spot from that first layer. Alright, I think another thing you can do, uh, which I will be doing here in just a second is take a white pencil. Of course, if you have a white Prisma pencil, it will of course do better than the white uh, pencil from this set. Of course, we're still using the Xena color colored pencils um, for this picture. Okay, so I'm just going back through with the deeper red here. Filling that all in. And in, in a second here, I'll grab that white pencil and we'll add a little bit of a highlight. And of course, because the white pencil um, from this set isn't as white as, say, a Prismacolor pencil, it's just going to add a little bit of a, a gleam there. So if, as you can see, it, it doesn't completely show as white, but it will give a white effect to that bow. We 
which gives it that that little bit of light reflection off of the center of the bow there. And so that is our first glass done. Now we're going to work on the garland behind the first the second glass. So with the garland uh, we're going to do that in some greens. I just got to figure out which greens here. taking me some time to grab the greens. I do believe we're going to use a light green and of course a medium green and a dark green. So I think the colors we're going to use are apple green, forest green, and cyan blue, which in this set are numbers 43, 30, and 24. I'm going to start with the apple green, which is number 43. And I'm just going to go a little ways out from the glass. The garland on the inside of the glass that you're seeing through the inside of the glass is going to be a very, very light layer of the greens just to give it that effect of being on the other side of the glass. So don't press too hard on when you're behind the glass. A little bit more pressure when you're on the outside of the glass area. And then we're going to go in with forest green and we're going to go from the edge and bring that down into the center. And of course, like I said, just make sure you don't put too much pressure on that you know, do a very light pressure on it to get that fuzzy, um, faded look of the glass. Once we get to the outside of the glass area, you know, put, put a little bit more pressure on it, but when you're behind the glass, try to do it as light handed as possible. I'm just going to work that green down uh, the garland. Into the glass. And then we'll take our deepest green, which is the cyan blue. Oh, we're still working with forest green. Once we're done with the forest green, we're going to take a little bit of cyan blue and deepen that up a little tiny bit more on the deepest part of the shadow areas. And then we're going to blend it with the um, apple green and just feather it down and blend it all out. And then we're going to do the same thing on the main part of the garland. We're just going to do that a little bit harder. So we're going to take that forest green and we're going to do the edges and then we're going to take the cyan blue, feather that into the forest green a little bit and then we'll blend it back out with the apple green. Just making sure that we get that center area, that center fold area there. Sorry about the hand in the way. I didn't uh, realize that it was blocking everything. 
I'll move it here in just a second. So basically all I'm doing is I'm just going through and adding that green, putting a little more pressure on it than I did on behind the glass between both the forest green and the cyan blue. And just building that color up. I'm going to take that forest green and cyan blue and also move it into the glass so that it looks like the garland is going to the fireplace behind the glass. So I'll be doing that here in just a moment. Just gotta grab the right colors. Just so that it looks like a continuous movement not uh, not choppy. But first we're going to do the bow on the glass itself. And we're going to do that back area. We're going to add that red in. And then we're going to go in with our champagne yellow and our wheat. The same as we did our first um, glass and we're just going to cover up that champagne area trying to get the color and tone of champagne. We can do that with the champagne yellow and the wheat yellow. So I put down a layer of wheat, added a bit of champagne to darken it up in some areas and then I'm blending it out with the wheat. Now we're going to do the bow just going to make sure I get a little bit of that champagne color in the back top of the glass there. And then we're of course working with the uh, carmine red, doing the bottom areas of the bow a little bit darker and with a lot more pressure, just making sure that it's darker because it's in the shadow. Get that bow all done the same as the other one with the um, with the three different reds. So we've got cardinal red, rose red, and strong red that we're going to work with. Right now we're working with the cardinal red, and then we'll work with the rose red and then we will finish it off with the strong red and then another coat of the rose red as well as our white. To give that bow a little bit of a, a bit of a light source area. So just lightly with the rose red, going over the entire bow. And then we'll take the strong red and we'll do the edges and get those shadows in. Just building that color, uh, making the bow look like it has a dimension to it. Make it look like it's standing out a little. And I know the picture is starting to look a little bit more Christmassy than I wanted, but that's okay. It's Thanksgiving. Christmas comes after Thanksgiving, so it's all good. <laughs> Just finishing up with that strong red. 
And I'm going to go back over it with the rose red in the opposite direction to cover up that white spot. And getting that all filled in. Taking our white pencil, putting in our, our highlights. And like I said, the white pencil won't show as much as, say, a Prismacolor or a white gel pen, but it does give you a nice um, soft effect. Now we're just going to go over it again with the rose. Now once you've put down that white, the rose won't um, be as dark over top of it. So you can definitely maintain that light area, which is, which is great. Now if you had a Prismacolor or a um, white gel pen, you can also do that with a Prismacolor or white gel pen and make it a lot brighter of a white. I just want it to be very subtle. I don't want it to be extremely bright. Otherwise I would have grabbed my Prisma. But I do want it to show that there's a, a light hitting it in that area. Now we're going to take that powder blue again and we're going to do the edges of the glass. So, And we're putting a lot of pressure on it just to get that blue color to show through. We're not going over the entire glass, just over the blue area. Bringing it down the side of the glass right over top of the champagne. And just feathering it in to give it that dimension into all aspects of the glass. I will probably take a white gel pen and do the bubbles uh, throughout both glasses. But otherwise, that is our wine glasses and champagne glasses. Of course, you can see the mantle through the glass as well as the brickwork as well as the garland. Now I'm going to fix this garland here. I'm going to put a little bit more green there so that it looks like the garland goes all the way to the mantle, all the way to the fireplace, and it doesn't look so broken up. So I'm just going to use the forest green and the cyan green because the yellow uh, in the champagne glass will work as the yellow that we used in the garland. Of course I will finish up the garlands and that sort of thing um, before tomorrow. Tomorrow is work in progress Wednesday and hopefully we'll have this whole picture completed by the end of work in progress Wednesday. So as you can see the the garland, you can see the garland through the glass now and the picture looks complete. It doesn't look like it's broken up by the, the glasses, which is great. Um, I want to say uh, for those of you that came to the live stream yesterday, I thank you very, very much. Uh, we did reach our goal. I appreciate each and every one of you and the family that this community has built for me is absolutely wonderful. Um, we were, like I said, we were able to reach that goal and uh, the person that we did that for will be coming on the channel um, to thank you all herself. Uh, as soon as she's ready to. Right now she's still working on getting everything 
to to a, a, a functional normal. Um, she, she's working, like I said, she's working and dealing with a seven year old and dealing with you know life relationships and all that fun stuff. She does have her older daughter who is helpful, but you know she's still still her child. She still feels responsible and you know basic life things but anyway I want to say thank you all very much for everything that you you do for the channel and for um, helping out yesterday I know it was uh, definitely uh, not something I would normally do on my channel but yeah Anyway, guys, of course, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. That's the best way to support the channel. Of course, you can definitely support it by um, hitting that join button as well and uh, seeing all the wonderful perks of membership. I hope to see you all tomorrow for Work in Progress Wednesday where we'll finish this picture off. And uh, yeah, other than that, guys, always remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And also to uh, relax, color, and stay safe. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope you all have a absolutely fantastic day. Until next time, bye-bye for now.